So thank you very much for coming. Um, my talk today is about uh, how I did, uh, how I copied this uh, design for my, that is used for surgeons um, into a 3D printable design. And before I go into the details about the, um, the part I'm talking about, I wanted to talk about why I'm doing this. Um, so the first, there's a problem that some countries or some places in the world have access to a 3D printer, but they don't have access to medical devices. So actually they could print their own medical devices, but they can't because right now, um, I'm telling you that the project I'm doing has been done before. It has been done by, by university, but they published a paper, didn't publish the files, and and nobody can actually print those items. The files are not available. So um, goal for this project is to make it open hardware, to make it available for for anyone in the world to print out and actually use this technology. Um, and on this project, uh, like any project, I'm learning a lot about things. On this project, this was about how different materials uh, react and how can I change a part from a different material to another material and what are the steps that I need to do to change them according to the material properties. And of course, I was getting paid for this, so I was very glad to know about that. <laughs> so, uh, this is the guide of the presentation. Where do you want to go? Where do we want to get to? What do we have? And what it took to get there? So, let's start with the first point. Where do we want to get to? So, this is a hemostat. So, what does it do? Uh, I don't have any formal medical training, so um, I'm gonna explain it with my with my words that are how I understand it. So it's used to clamp things, especially blood vessels, and this is used to stop you from bleeding out while being operated. So you can probably imagine how important this is for a surgeon, and probably more important for the patient. And um, this is to be used for this thing out of metal should be made in plastic, 3D printed. And um, yeah, so the tools I have at hand. So I'm working with uh, open source software only. Um, what I'm using is OpenSCAD. That is uh, basically a program that turns code into, into a 3D model. Uh, but that wasn't advanced for, enough for me for my purposes. So I previously made uh, this thing called Crystal Scat that is that enables me to program complex models in Ruby, and this produces Open Scat code, which then produces the 3D models. Then I have my editor of the choice, GEdit or GMate. Uh, I used uh, GIMP. I will show you in a bit what for, and I've used my 3D printer. And now to what it took to get there. So we have this thing. And um, before I go on, I will talk about a bit about uh, how testing of this works when I do, do the design or how, how does the design process work. And uh, I'm using a thing called iterative design. That is um, what it means is that I program a thing, I test it, like I print it out in my 3D printer, I inspect it, I learn from the mistakes or the things that are actually good, and make changes to that design and repeat. So, um, oh, I have a little prototype counter on the bottom left, and uh, maybe you can start making guesses how many prototypes I needed to copy the function of this this thing. So. Uh, another thing is that 
it doesn't need to look the same, but it needs to have the same function. Um, so another word about testing, there are three stages of testing. The first one is that I print it out, I test it in my hands and see, um, or, or try to figure out how it works and, uh, and think about, does it, does it work like it should work? Then there's my employer, who is a doctor. He prints it out and gives me feedback about it. Does it work for him? What does not work? Uh, the third stage is he gives it to an actual surgeon or many of these and get feedback from them. So I will talk about, at a few stages, I will talk about where I went in that. Many prototypes I did uh, just for my stage one because I saw a lot of errors in, in my iterations. And um, I think I can go on. Oh, yeah, there's, there's just uh, another thing. Why couldn't I just uh, copy and paste this thing? So there are 3D scanners around. Um, so they could use a, they could basically uh, copy the outer shape of this object. They could make a really nice copy of that. But uh, they can't go into the inner details about this this object. So, for example, this thing has a hinge inside of the object, and a three D scanner cannot scan these parts. So, when you would send this to a three D printer, just like from from the three D scanner on, you can just you can get maybe the the correct shape, but it wouldn't have a function. It would be just fixed and not movable like it should be. So um, also to add, this thing is made of, out of steel. So I talked about, uh, I needed to change material properties. So this thing is quite thin. The arms, look at the arms on, on here. They are maybe, I don't know, a few millimeters thick. And if you make the same out of plastic, it will just bend or snap and not apply any force to the actual tool head. Um, so let's start with my timeline. Uh, on April 9, I've got a 2D scan of this stuff. So why a 2D scan? So on the bottom of this picture, there's a ruler. And this gives me the two-dimensional uh, this makes me able to measure it in two dimensions. And the way I did it was I will open, the, open my GIMP program, copied the ruler around, rotated it, and took measurements. So I was able to, um, to do a basic shape of uh, the object I was making before actually having access to the real tools. So, um, then I decided to, to just start with the thing that most of the parts have. This was uh, the hand grips. Uh, I will not go through this code here because uh, you can, on the end of the presentation, there's a link to my GitHub. And you can download the code there and see it in detail. Um, on the progress of making this, I improved my uh, CAD program. My, uh, my Ruby to open sketch uh, program at basic things like uh, a ruler to measure what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just skipping through there qu quite quickly. I use a library to make uh, make the arms. Was really simple in code. I've made a simple uh, hinge and a simple tool hat. This was also very little work, and. I printed it out just for, I, I know it didn't work properly, but I just printed it out and see how it feels in the hand and the dimensions somewhat match and is it, would I be able to use it? And so I got the first prototype out and it has a working hinge. Well, the tool head doesn't grip. The arm shape was a bit off, but well, I didn't know better this time. It doesn't have any locks. But actually, you could hold it in your hands and see what's going on. So I went on. 
and I got this. So I've got the the picture of uh, the locking mechanism on the scan, and it didn't tell me much. So there was these three pins there, and um, I couldn't figure it out how oh, they are arranged. It looks like they they are pointing upwards. So I figured out um, I can probably make this as uh, as simple as uh, stacking some cubes along the cube, and let it lock from make it able to just lock by pushing on it. So I put it on my cat model. I was trying to print, or I was printing out and trying to use it and. Well, what could possibly go wrong? Disaster, it broke. Well, not a big disaster because prototyping with a 3D printer is a really, really cheap thing. So this didn't cost me a fortune, just a few cents of material cost and time wasted. So not a big loss. So well, uh, in my code, that was a really quick fix actually to, to make it stronger. Um, I try to parametric uh, to make every parame parameter par parametric. Uh, so you could just change the width, the height, and the pin count, and make another prototype in a few minutes. But before going on, I was uh, also working on getting a better grip of the tool head because um, the the previous prototype resulted in a really flat surface along the tool head which didn't provide much grip. So uh, I deleted a few cylinders along along the sides of the tool heads. And um, I was sure this wouldn't print as as it were on the OpenSCAD model because my printer's line width is a bit higher than, than what's shown here. But actually I got a, a, a server that wasn't smooth out of it. So that was a plus. So. This is number three. I've got a working hinge, a better working tool head for my for my thinking, some arm shapes that I didn't know how it worked at this time, and I had a locking mechanism that actually worked. It didn't break. But at this point, I I sent it to my uh, employer, and he printed it out and said to me, "Hmm, this is not quite right. Uh, um, there are some things." Yeah, it doesn't really work like like it should. Maybe wait till you get the actual model and see what's going on. And by this date, it was already on the mail. Three days later, I've got a nice package. Getting all these tools. So um, let me get a sip of water. For explaining. Okay. So I've got some tweezers, some scissors. Then again, from the top there to two pairs of tweezers, then there's a towel clamp, then there's another pair of scissors, then there's a needle driver, and on the bottom there's the hemostat that I was working on first. I will get to the details of the other parts later, or some of them. Um, so I had a closer look at the actual hemostat out of steel. And if you, as you can see on this slide, if you look at the arm structure, you see some major differences. So what I didn't get from the 2D scan is how it actually operates, how it functions. So what I didn't know is that when it's at uh, when it's not closed, the metal tool it already closes the front of the the front grip, and the more you push, the more pressure it applies to the front tip. So on my prototype, I was thinking about, yeah, when you push it all the way through, it should close. So that that was obviously wrong. But I didn't know better. I didn't have it in my hands at, at this time. So um, there was another thing, and this was the locks. So I made a close up on the locks, which is on the actual hemostat, which is on the left. and. As you can hopefully see there, it's uh, somewhat, somewhat angled. So what happens if, as if you push it 
if you just push the grips in, is it locks automatically. So mine was just a, mine were just uh, straight teeth, and it wouldn't would work that way. So I went on and made a rough implementation of uh, of the original. Uh, I'm not showing you the code here, which is a bit too excessive to show you. Again, my GitHub link will be uh, on the second to last slide. Uh, the next thing what I did is I made the arm shape differently. Um, this was a, not that much of a big mod. So I just did that in a hurry, I must say. And I printed out another prototype. So hmm. if you look closely at the arms, arm shape, you might see that there's something wrong with that. So, I messed it totally up. <laughs> um, what it resulted in was that it was bending in the direction of where I'm pushing, which resulted in an incredibly weak grip on, on the tool head. So, okay, I was frustrated. I fixed, on this day, I fixed the arm shapes. I have to move, move some stuff around. And, well, I wanted to make another prototype at this day, but actually I was too tired to, to actually fix the locking pins. Uh, because by, by making the arm shape differently, I, I couldn't, I, fit, I broke the locking pins on this stage. So if you push that down, if you try to squeeze it, it will not match up. The teeth will just not match up and this will no way grip at all. Well, next day was an easy fix, wasn't it? Well, there's a wall missing. Easy fix. So just added in a piece of wall and basically it was ready for prototyping again. So we had number five. So I had a working hinge, somewhat working tool head. Uh, no. Um, we have an arm shape that's in the right shape and some somewhat working locks. So, um, I was saying somewhat working tool head. The way I tested the tool head was it, it applies force to the grips. That's the function of it. So, I used, I took a, a plastic bag, I put the original hemostat in locked it and tried to pull it out. I did repeat that with my printed model and it was much inferior than the the uh, the metal model. So I was thinking, yeah, how can I fix that? It's probably just making the arms bigger so there's more material and well they were that included a few changes to the code uh basically just a few settings but um it works something else so i didn't notice it this time just printed it out with a big arm shape so i've got number six i've got a working hinge i've got a somewhat working tool head a good arm shape and no nah, the locking pins weren't working at this <sighs> notice this problem before <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I should have looked uh, looked actually at the code that was that this produced, and well, I needed to rotate these along, so that wasn't a big big problem, just a bit of time loss, and that was number seven. So I had a working inch, I had a working tool head, or a somewhat working tool head. Uh, I had working arm shape and well okay it locks actually it worked it locked but I did the the plastic bag thing again and tried to to actually test it about with the hemostat it was much better than before but I managed to get the same grip that I that I got on the on one tooth of the actual metal tool compared to three 
pulling it all the way down to three locking pins on the plastic tool, so it was still inferior. So I was thinking about my pipe library that, that I made. It accepted squares only at this point, and if I try to make make it uh, rectangle, it will show something like this. This doesn't look really right, does it? So, can, can I have this rectangle pipe thing that I need? Well, the answer was yes. Just required a bit of a little hack. And this was this was not the complete hack. I had so I had to do a small hack on my crystal scat. Was about two lines changes <laughs> change, and just needed to add this, and I had my working pipe library for rectangle pipes. So great, I thought. Print it out and see what happens. So I had a working hinge. I had uh, now I had a good working tool head. I had a good arm shape, and I had well, not a good locking because it broke, it broke under its own force. So the least thing you want to have uh, when you uh, when a surgeon operates a patient is that stuff gets in the patient. So by breaking off a part of the of the tool, this might actually get into the patient without being detected. So that would be a total disaster. <sighs> well, what do I do? Make it bigger. Oh, uh, I don't know. I might have missed a slide here, but actually just made it a bit bigger and just needed a small hack to do that, which I did, and that was number nine. So I had a working inch, a working tool head, a working, a good looking arm mechanism, and I had a working or somewhat working grip. I will tell you about one thing now, and I was said I have a somewhat working gripping mechanism. So. I sent this to my employer and said, have a look at this. This look, this works quite well for me. So I actually printed it and he tested it and it worked for him too. And uh, I was talking about him, about the gripping mechanism. What do you think about it? He said, oh, it's great. I was like, hmm, but this doesn't look that perfectly when I print it out. I was like, yeah, but it's fine. So, hmm. Uh, I was like, if it ain't broken, why fix it? So, I left this, uh, I left this uh, subtle for a bit, and this was, for a while, this was my last prototype. So, I had some other tools to work on, I had some other projects to work on, and after months, three days ago, my employer comes back to me, and says, "Hey." Um, I, I talked to a surgeon, so, or uh, to a hospital. That was stage three of the testing process I was talking about earlier. Um, why would, and well, and he said, yeah, there's something, some other things are still problematic on these. Locking mechanism is one thing. I was like, yeah, I told you so. <laughs> but, okay, doesn't, doesn't help. So I was thinking about, about it in the night and on the next day, which was two days ago, I was, I was uh, looking at it and saying, why do we actually need three pins on every side? If we just have one pin, we could just, we could rotate the pins in a correct shape, so they will lock according to the position of the, of the actual uh, opposite part. So the goal was to have both walls that connect to each other to be in the same angle as uh, well in the same angle so all, both the balls have the most contact area they, so there was no air gap in between which was uh, the case there was just one problem uh, uh, it made it bigger so well I was like yeah try it out I printed it out and I had a working hinge on this. This is number 10, by the way. 
I had a working hinge, I had a working tool head, I had a good looking arm shape, and I had a, for me, perfectly working locking mechanism. So, uh, I have to say, I haven't reached my employer yet, and prob probably I don't have access to a 3D printer. So this, uh, at the moment, is my final prototype, number 10. And, uh, well, for me it works, it needs to be be tested by my employer and by someone independent yet. Um, later on, you can, after the talk, you can actually have a look at this. It's here on the table with the original. And, well, I've got an overview about all the prototypes I need to make. So, um, you can see on the top one there was I was uh, focusing on making the shape, then I wanted to make the bigger, uh, making the making it stronger, and and yeah, fixing the last thing like the rock. So I was going through the other tools that I need to make. So to make my other work, uh, for that I I love my name. I love my thing, my crystal scat thing, because I just could, could just inherit, inherit uh, the the things that I need to make, and copying most of the stuff, and like this, I just overwrite the tool head and have a different tool with a, with the same stuff in it, uh, which wasn't actually true about the needle driver. So uh, at this point, I wanted to talk about what this thing actually is. Um, So maybe you can zoom in a bit on the stream. So uh, this thing is used uh, to make um, sutures, and it holds a needle, a surgical needle, and it needs to be held in different grips. But that's not the only function, which I didn't know at first. So it needed a few few more prototypes. So you wrap a yarn around this thing to make knots. So the most important, or the important part is that actually the tool head is uh, is flush with, uh, with the body. And my previous prototypes for the hinge, I just put a bolt through and didn't bother about this issue. So I had, for this model, I had to redesign the hinge to make the bolt flush with the surface. So you could actually put a thread around and it will just go on to the shaft. Uh, the other tool that I made is called a uh, towel clamp, and I only needed one prototype. So, um, how did I do that? <laughs> I told you earlier that uh, this project was done before, and they published a paper, and they had the photo of all their tools they, they had, and they said in the and the text that they had problems with making the toggle clamp. Uh, I haven't explained what it actually does. It's fairly simple. It basically clamps two pieces of toggle together or cloth and uh, locks it in place so it doesn't fall to some to anywhere. So I actually, inspired by the design they did, I just made a model. Uh, didn't make a lot of changes in my model from the Amistad. I printed it out, and I got a working inch, working tool head, working body, and the somewhat working lock that I, that I haven't fixed on on this one. Uh, to the to the last last one that I have on the Amistad. Uh, yet, but this will be done in a bit. So actually, I might I will need one more prototype, but actually this one came out perfect for me. Came out perfect for the doctor, and he gave it to other doctors as well. So it has just passed three, all three test stage stages on one try. Well, wow, excellent. Um, so this is unrelated to this particular project, but it's also really, really, really cool stuff. Uh, this is a three D printed stethoscope. It uses zero parts of the original, and I have to say there are. We made it. We made it like a copy of the so-called gold standard of the industry, 
which costs about 150 euros. Um, we we printed it out. We tested a lot of uh, different stethoscope parts. I will come to that in a bit. We attached some tubing to that. I have molded the air plugs. I will show you that in a bit as well. And it works better as the original uh, gold standard in the industry. And guess what this costs? It's under one euro of uh, production costs. So uh, the one euro part, which looks a bit like a toy, works better than the one out of a 50 euro part. And um, we couldn't get the reason for this, but uh, I'll show you how, how we tested it actually. <laughs> so we filled a water balloon, well, a balloon with the Hello Kitty logo on it, very important, uh, with water. And we attached some headphones to it, and uh, we attached a tube to the stethoscope, but this is the original Litman. And inside this tube there was a microphone. Mm, this was our setup to record the, the voice, the, the sound that was going into the stethoscope. We compare, compared it to our printed ones, and uh, the latest version of the printed one is actually performing better than this, this metal one. So um, this is how I made the um, the earplugs for the for the stethoscope. There was actually two parts: uh, silicone mold. I put in silicone foam by pu pushing it down a syringe. Let it harden, get the mold off, and get working earplugs. As simple as that. So that was the stethoscope project. Um, there's a, there's a stethoscope here. You can uh, have a look at it later. So this one I don't have I don't have on the table. This is my actual my current work in progress. Um, this machine is I picked this up from uh, Klim Dianov. Uh, this prototype um, I will develop this prototype to be an automatic or semi-automatic machine, which is used to produce bandages. So you put on the yarns about all the comms and a yarn to the to to a shuttle and it will produce uh then produce uh bandages for also for uh countries that don't have access to medical supplies. So they they can make it themselves. Alright, cat tags. <laughs> this is basically the end of my presentation. Um Uh, these are all my links for my GitHub related stuff. Uh, all the work that I've done is on GitHub. Um, you might want to check out, if you browse through the code, you want to check out the uh, Crystal Scat as well. It's on crystalscat.org. Um, um, yeah, the, the code, is, code for the projects are on there. And if you want to contact me, my email is webmaster at joaz.de. And uh, you can contact me if you have any questions to the project, if you have any work for me, uh, engineering work. Uh, also, I have a web shop that is webwebsource.com. Uh, I sell 3D printers. I do that for, for like a f few years right now. So. <coughs> If you need any of these, go on this website and help me out there. Uh, okay, we have most of time for questions, I think. Working? No? Yeah, okay, it's working. Um, you, in the, at the beginning you said uh, that you had to obviously change from metal to plastics. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have any feedback on the doctor you're working with on, on um, disinfect disinfection? Is that a, a problem for plastic or is it just work, does it just work the same way then with metal? Uh, that might be a bigger problem than on the metal part. Um, but uh, a non-disinfected -dis part, or, uh, if you try to disinfect this part, it's probably much better than uh, than having no parts at all. 
So that is the the whole point is to have access to these things, and by not having access to things, you you the patient will probably just die anyway. So um, um, you can possibly try to disinfect it with uh, disinfectants, or uh, ABS can withstand up to one hundred five degrees, so you could steam it. I'm not sure how effective this is for 3D printed as the surfaces are not perfectly smooth. So I'm not an expert on this. Micro maybe a microbiologist can tell me about this. Um, yeah, but I said it's probably much more value right now than than having no tool at all. Are there other questions? Um, do you use any special uh, materials or is it just the regular uh, plastic that you can use for any uh, for printer. my yeah for my uh, testing I just use normal ABS and my doctor uh, employee used PLA for normal PLA for printing these out so uh, it was a requirement of the job to have normal materials to print these as they are most available in countries that don't have medical equipment so. Uh, what what the temperature uh, or the melting temperature of this uh, material? Do you know know that? Um, what do you mean by melting temperature? Well, uh, in the in the three D printer, it's it's uh, melted, right? The extrusion okay. temperature, you mean? So ah yeah oh, yeah okay, <laughs> um, yeah ABS melts at like two hundred two hundred thirty eight degree in my printer. PLA would melt about one hundred ninety to two two hundred and ten depending on, on type and printer. Have you thought about um, rounded corners and tips for the tool head? They um, look a bit uh, yeah, bold. Edgy. Okay. <laughs> um, possibly. Um, they get a bit rounded through that the fact that the 3D printer cannot make perfect edges. Uh, so, for my feedback so far, it's, uh, it looked okay. So, I might get uh, feedback that it says it should be more round. Okay, then I will make it more round. Are there other questions? So I see no more questions. When there are questions, I think she will be around. And now you can see uh, the instruments on the desk yep. at please, the front. Please come forward and see the tools versus the printed ones.